My daddy went and named me Sue Flay. All Johnny Cash jokes aside, this is Chef Daz tuning in. We're going to show you how to make a savory cheese souffle. Brought to you by BC Egg. Make sure you check out the website, bcegg.com, for the recipe. I'll link it below as well if you just want to click there and you'll get right to the recipe. It's fantastic. <laughs> People think souffles are difficult. They're really not that difficult. Just a few key steps which we'll go through. And it's the most amazing, luscious, delicate treat that you'll ever have. Now, you can make them savory. You can make them sweet. It doesn't matter. We're going to do a cheese souffle made with Swiss cheese a little bit of Parmesan. Let me show you how it's done, all right? So we're gonna do four individual ones. So I have one cup ramekins times four. You can see that I buttered them. And all we're going to do is we're gonna coat them with grated Parmesan cheese so that the souffle does not stick. So all I do is I just turn it around each one and make sure it's thoroughly coated. Tap it out to the next one and just keep doing that all the way around. For all four. Okay, once they're all coated, let's separate our eggs out. Now it's going to take six eggs, four yolks, plus two extra whites. You can save the extra yolks for breakfast, whatever you want to do with them, okay? But we need to separate them. This is really important. So we have a bowl we're going to put our four egg yolks into. In our mixing bowl here, we're going to put our whites. Now what I do is I separate the whites and yolks separately, individually, one at a time. And here's why. We don't want any fat in the whites. If we get fat in the whites, it's going to inhibit the whipping of them. So just gently with your hands, take each yolk, separate it, put it in the bowl. So we're looking for four yolks. Now this white I have here, that I can tell that no yolks have been broken into there, so I can put one at a time into there. So again, we're looking for six egg whites, four egg yolks. So let's keep going. They're all separated, so again, four egg yolks, six egg whites standing by. We're gonna use the whip attachment for our mixer, but we're not gonna do that just yet. Let's go over to the stove top. So on medium heat, we're gonna melt some butter. Oh yeah, make sure you preheat your oven at 375 degrees. Okay, the butter has melted. Again, we're still on medium heat. We're gonna add a couple tablespoons of flour. This is gonna be our thickener for our sauce, okay? We're basically making a roux right now. And what I want you to do for two minutes, keep stirring constantly, and this is going to cook the flour so that you don't get that starchy taste of the flour. This is really important to do. Anytime you're making a, a sauce with a flour thickener, you always need to take a few minutes to cook that flour, okay? Do you see a bubbling there? This is great. Just keep stirring a couple of minutes, medium heat. All right, to that mixture, we're gonna add a teaspoon of Dijon mustard really helps accent the cheese flavor. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, stir that in. And then we're gonna gradually add our milk. Three quarters of a cup of milk, and you wanna add it gradually because it's gonna thicken really quick, and you wanna have a chance to work out the lumps. So just a little bit at a time until you can incorporate it. And once that addition has been incorporated, then you can add a little bit more. This is a perfect opportunity for you to smooth out any lumps that are forming. And again, still keeping it on medium heat. And I'm not stirring any more milk in until that addition is smooth, which it is, and adding the last of our milk. Just keep going until it just starts to come to a boil. And we basically have a white sauce right here, a bechamel. Okay, when it just starts to come to a boil like that, it's when you wanna take it off the heat. So we're not only just removing it from the heat, we're gonna remove it from the pan as well because the pan will retain a lot of heat and we wanna try and cool down this sauce. Great. Let's leave that sit there for a minute while we go to our 
egg yolks. Now I wanna tell you, one large egg only has 70 calories and six grams of the highest quality protein you can get. 14 key nutrients and all nine essential amino acids. We now need to mix one quarter cup of that sauce into these egg yolks. And the reason for that is we want to get them up to temperature without cooking them and having you know chunks of egg throughout. We don't want to do that, obviously. So when I'm working by myself, little tip here, get a cloth, a dishcloth, damp, and just sort of bunch it around your bowl. And let's steal a quarter cup of that sauce, shall we? Now remember, the sauce is still really hot, so we want to add it to the egg yolks very slow. And that cloth down there is going to help you keep your bowl steady. And just drizzle that sauce in your egg yolks very slowly. And again, this will raise the temperature of them, making it easier for us to add them into the remaining sauce. Great. Now basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the spots with the bowls. We have our white sauce here. We have our egg yolks here. Now we're going to combine our egg yolks slowly into that sauce. A souffle is a balance of the richness of these yolks with the light and fluffiness of the egg whites, which we're gonna get to soon. And make sure you get all the egg yolks in there. Those are beautiful BC eggs. And thoroughly combined. Now to this egg yolk sauce mixture, we're gonna stir in the Swiss cheese and a couple tablespoons of chopped green onions. And just stir that in. Now the residual warmth of that sauce will melt that cheese nicely. All right, let's set that to the side. Remember our egg whites? To that, we're gonna add a couple of ingredients a little bit of sugar, okay, and a little bit of cream of tartar. What's cream of tartar? Cream of tartar is this dry powder. It's an acid, it's actually called tartaric acid, and it's the byproduct of making wine. You'll see it in your kitchen, you might not know what it is or when to use it, when not to use it, and basically it's an acid, but it also acts as a stabilizer, so it's gonna help these egg whites to stay nice and whipped. The other great little trivia fact about cream of tartar, if you don't have any baking powder and you need some for a recipe and you have baking soda, you take two measures of cream of tartar to one measure of baking soda and that will make baking powder. So for example, two teaspoons of cream of tartar mixed with one teaspoon of baking soda will give you three teaspoons or one tablespoon a baking powder. So when you see that cream of tartar kicking around your kitchen, another good use for it right there. So let's add that. And because that cream of tartar is an acid, we're adding a little bit of sugar, that three quarter teaspoon, just to give the recipe some balance. Now we wanna turn the mixer on high and we're looking for stiff peaks. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, let's have a look. So what you're looking for is exactly that, stiff peaks, you shake it, it doesn't move, okay? And they don't look dry, which is great. You don't want dry peaks, you want stiff peaks. So now what we need to do is we need to fold this into this. And I'm switching to a bigger spatula to do my folding. Now for the first part of it, we can take about a third of the egg whites and just stir it in. You don't need to worry about folding. It's gonna make it more easy to incorporate the egg whites folding them into here if there's some egg whites already mixed in. Now, here comes the part we're gonna make this souffle mixture really light and airy. We need to fold this in. So let me just get it all out of this dish into here. I'm gonna show you a great folding technique. This is what's gonna give you incredible rise with your souffle, and it's probably the biggest trick I can tell you about making souffles. You need a good folding technique. So what I do is I scrape the bowl and then push. Scrape, turn the bowl, and push. See what I'm doing with my other hand? I'm turning the bowl as I scrape the bowl, push. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing everything up from underneath, pushing it down. And the idea of folding is to keep that air in the egg whites as you're folding them in. So it doesn't become deflated. We could just stir it like a mad person like we did with the first third of the egg whites, but you're gonna lose that volume. You wanna keep that volume. So again, turn the bowl as you're scraping, bring it around and push it down. And that pushes more air into it as well as you're doing that. And you keep doing that and rotating the bowl, scraping down the sides and really getting underneath. And eventually all that will come together into one homogenous mixture. This is the most important part right here of making a souffle. Everything else, man, it's just cooking. It's all good. We're just gonna keep doing it. It takes a few minutes, be patient. You wanna go until all those Bits of egg white are incorporated. You can see the little egg white 
lumps in there. Just keep going. Don't cheat and stir it in. Just keep folding. We are there. Now, we're gonna take our ramekins and we're going to fill them. Try not to make a mess. If you get a spill a little bit, you can just get a, that cloth and just wipe up the edges. Now I put the ramekins on a baking tray, you'll see that. It just makes it easier to get them in and out of the oven quickly. We don't wanna lose any heat in the oven when we open the door to get these in. Now, depending on the size of your eggs, I know we all say large, but there is a varying degree of large size. Depending on the size of your eggs and depending on your folding and whipping technique is gonna determine how much they're gonna be filled. Give them a couple taps. That just knocks out the bigger air bubbles and pop them in your oven, 375 degrees, anywhere from 17 to 20 minutes. What you're looking for is for them to be puffed up, golden. If your eggs are cold direct from the fridge, I would go 20 minutes. If they've been sitting out room temperature, I would focus more on the 17 minutes, but somewhere in between there, you'll see. But don't open the oven. You don't wanna do that. You want that oven heat to stay in there the whole time. Let them puff up really nice, and we'll see you back there when they're done. All right, time to get these out. And I haven't peeked. Watch this. Look at those beautiful souffles. Awesome. They're big and fluffy and beautiful. And all you do is take one, you put it on a plate that can handle the heat, and you serve it immediately. Because as they sit, they're going to deflate. But it's okay. It's all right. People expect that with a souffle. And wow, these are just so tasty. It is so easy to make a savory cheese souffle. Just check out bcegg.com for the recipe. And man, you're really gonna enjoy this and people are gonna be so impressed with your skills. And don't forget, you can use one big dish instead. Use a one liter casserole dish, put the whole recipe in there and bake it for about 22 to 25 minutes instead of the 17 to 20. This is Chef Dez signing out. Where are you getting your protein from?